I wasn't planning on doing a Jurgen Klopp tactic, but a Patreon member requested for me to do one, so I had to do it. Instead of me just giving you a tactic, today's video is going to be how to create your own Jurgen Klopp tactic. Of course, I have my own version where we did really well. We basically won everything with Liverpool, but in today's video, we're also going to play a game as a Champions League final against Real Madrid. And that game is to see how the tactic plays out. So we're going to create the tactic. We're going to look at the results. We're going to play a game, but also we're going to check some mini results with Aston Villa. I played about 10 games or so. I've made a tweak for Aston Villa as well. So all fun and games. Today's video should be all fun and games. If you are enjoying my type of content, make sure you are subscribed. Make sure you like the video, leave a comment. All of that will help the channel. And also like this video. If you are a Patreon member, then you can request some content as well. So, so make sure you check out my Patreon page. And now we're going to waste no more time. Let's get stuck into this video. Welcome back and like I said this video is more of a guide rather than hey just download this tactic so in this video we're going to walk through every step when creating this tactic we're going to talk about the instructions a little and basically why I selected certain things or why I would select certain things so let's head over to the tactic screen now for me the first step has to be setting the formation we already have the idea of the formation that we're going to go with. Of course, we all do. Jurgen Klopp and Liverpool use a 4-3-3. And that is exactly what we're going to do in Football Manager. So you can just click the little formation, set to formation, and then look for the 4-3-3 DM wide. And here we are, the Jurgen Klopp formation already. Now, for me, the next step was how to get the best out of certain players. Because I want to create a Jurgen Klopp tactic, I already have an idea of what I want to see when I'm looking at the match engine. I of course want to get the best out of Trent Alexander-Arnold, he's been absolutely fantastic. Mo Salah, Virgil van Dijk as well, Fabinho even. And those are the players that I focus on trying to get the best out of those certain players. I mean to make this tactic really work. So in goal, of course, we're going to go with Alisson. For me, he just has to be a sweeper keeper possibly on support. Trent Alexander-Arnold at right back. We're going to put Mo Salah on the right wing as well. Fabinho for me is going to play as a defensive midfielder. And then for Virgil van Dijk at the back four, he's going to be the left side of centre back. And then, then we are. These are kind of the four key players that I'm going to kind of focus on, try and get the best out of these players. So when it comes to setting their roles, I want these roles to be absolutely spot on. Because when it comes to recreating tactics, you kind of find yourself compromising. You can't capture absolutely everything that you see in real life and then put it into the game. So for me, it's all about getting the key ideas, getting those key players banging. I mean, for Trent Alexander-Arnold in real life, we kind of see him in this area here, the right half space, where he's putting in dangerous through balls, he's putting in dangerous crosses. He's really been a dangerous creative player for Liverpool this season. So of course, we have to keep that in mind. Mo Salah as well, it's very rare that you should see him hanging out on that right wing. He likes to cut inside. He likes to that affect these sort of areas here he likes to score goals for Fabinho it's all about protecting that back four Virgil van Dijk the ball playing defender as well these are the key players for me that I really want to focus on getting the best out of so we know who the key players are the key players are set in their positions now it's all about filling the rest of the team so Sadio Mane of course is going to be playing out on the left wing or Luis Diaz as well those two can actually rotate so it's all about who you have in mind because for me personally, I would have two different roles. Sadio Mane may be an inside forward, whereas Luis Diaz, I may try to use him as an inverted winger. But for Jordan Henderson, he will be the right side of central midfielder. Thiago will be the left side of central midfielder. Andrew Robertson, of course, as the left back. And then for Virgil van Dijk's defensive partner, you can go for Matip, Konate, or Joe Gomez for this game or for this save purpose, which is going to go for Joel Matip. So now we have, oh, actually the striker. You can go for Diego Jota or Firmino. Again, it's down for your preference. For me, I prefer Diego Jota. So there we are. We have filled in all 11 positions. Now it's all about the player roles. This video is sponsored by the wonderful Spit. So before we go any further, check this app out. I'm proud to present the new fantasy football app. It's brand new on the market and it's absolutely fantastic. For the next two weeks or so game week 30 and game week 31, you can play with a free chance of winning a prize. You can win a holiday. You can win a gift card for your PSN or your Xbox. You can win Beats headphones as well. There are some prizes for you to win. This app is currently available for those who are living in the UK and Ireland and you have to be 18 years of age or older. 
This app lets you build your own team where your captain earns double points and you can test yourself against other people such as your friends, such as myself as well. You can join my group. Just give me a message on how you can join. There's also weekly competitions. It's not just about the seasons. Weekly, you can win your share of £70,000. So make sure you check out the weekly competitions. But admittedly, the best part about this app for me personally is the fact that you don't actually have to leave it. So when you are selecting your teams, all the stats that you need is all inside the app. If you're lost, if you need help, it's all inside the app. Everything is inside the app. So make sure you check it out. The download link will be in the description below. So, so go and check the app out. I know you want to, it's free. You can win some cash as well. Check it out. Let's get back into Football Manager. Welcome back to the tactics screen. And now we're at the stage of having to select the player roles. Now, like we said a little bit earlier, I really want to get the best out of certain players. So for Trent Alexander-Arnold, we already spoke a little about how he likes to get inside of the pitch rather than overlap. He likes to come inside the right half space and really affect that area. So for Trent Alexander-Arnold to try and get the best out of him, I've gone for the inverted wing back on attack. We all have a rough idea of how an inverted wing back works. He likes to come inside, but of course there are three different duties. You can have the defensive one where he's mainly just gonna stay with the back four or the back whatever, how many defenders you've got. The inverted wing back on support, he's gonna kind of be a supportive player. He's gonna kind of just wander around in this area here. Again, come inside when he does have the ball, but for the inverted wing back, this is where he's going to be really aggressive, get further forward and really try and affect this area here. So he's going to come inside in that right half space, but a lot of the times you will see him in that zone 14 area, sometimes even inside the box, which you will see in this little highlight clip here. So the inverted wing back can be a really, really dangerous role. As we can see here, he likes to dribble more. He likes to cut inside, take more risk which is what we really want from Trent Alexander-Arnold. He crosses less often, which is kind of a compromise because we do want Trent Alexander-Arnold to actually be crossing more often. But then again, I'll be lying to you if I said he doesn't cross because actually a lot of his assists came from crosses in this sort of area here. But he also likes to get further forward. He sits more narrow and he also roams from his position. So for Trent Alexander-Arnold, we've gone for the inverted wing back. For Virgil van Dijk, of course, we're going to go for that ball playing defender. He's going to be kind of the main tool when we're building that from the back. Trying those diagonal passes as well, but he's also got that creative freedom to dribble with the ball, progress with the ball, try and bring the ball out from defence. Fabinho, now there's a few roles that we could have went with. Defensive midfielder, ball winning midfielder, the anchor man, halfback possibly. Now this all depends on your interpretation of Fabinho in real life. For me, you could have went with the defensive midfielder. Personally, you could have went for the defensive midfielder, ball winning midfielder or the anchor man. But I went for that ball winning midfielder. He plays in the central area. The ball winning midfielder's main function is to close down the opposition and win the ball. But with the defensive duty, the ball winning midfielder looks to win the ball in the center of the midfield and quickly lay it off to a more creative player. Now, the more creative player part, that is a piece of key information that we will use a little bit later on. Now, lastly, for the key players, Mo Salah, of course, we will be using that inside forward. Now, I'd usually wait a little to do the player instructions, so we are going to be doing the player instructions a little bit after, of course, but for Mo Salah, of course, we're going to be shooting more often. I want as many goals as possible for Mo Salah, so he will be shooting more often. Now we saw that the key players is back plugging the rest of the team. So for Joao Matip, we're gonna just leave him as the central defender. So we've got the nice balance of a ball playing defender and also a central defender. One taking more risk, one being a little bit more safe in possession. For Andrew Robertson, again, there are a couple roles that you could have went with and it all depends on your interpretation. You could have went with the full back on attack personally, or you could have went with a wing back on support, which is what I went with, the wing back on support, where he's gonna be looking to get further forward, support the wide winger as well on the left hand side, but he's also going to be running wide with the ball rather than coming inside like Trent Alexander-Arnold does. Now in real life, he actually does a mixture of both. He does go outside, he does come inside, but this mainly focuses on when the player has the ball. So when Robertson has the ball, then he's gonna run wide with the ball rather than his player movement of just running wide constantly, he can still 
underlap that left winger so for andrew robertson we will be using the wing back on support for fabinho we've already done his role now we can move into central midfield henderson's role in football manager was kind of a headache for me because in real life he likes to shift out in this wider area here and by him shifting out this allows mo salah to come inside but it also allows trent alexander arnold to come inside as well because of course the inverted wing back he likes to come inside we don't want these two to be bumping heads so to speak so we do want henderson to kind of shift out in those wider areas now you can use a carrilero for this or you can use a mazala for me i didn't necessarily want to use a mazala because for me that is a fairly aggressive role we kind of want henderson to be getting further forward but also getting back and drifting out into those wide right areas so we don't necessarily want to use a mazala a carrilero you can use but i've gone for a box to box personally but what i've done is ask jordan henderson to stay wider and run wide with the ball so when we have the ball when the team has the ball he's instructed to stay wider and then when he gets the ball he's instructed to run wide with the ball in those wide right areas again this should create space for trent alexander to move inside but also allow mo salah to come inside as well as henderson now should be covering this wide right channel so again to clear up the reasons why i use the box to box midfielder because he also gets further forward and he gets back as well being that engine for the liverpool side so for henderson he's going to be a box to box midfielder for tiago we of course have to be using a playmaking role there's a couple playmaking roles here a roman playmaker the advanced playmaker but for the advanced playmaker we have the option to use support and we have the option to use attack the Roman playmaker, now he's going to be moving all over the pitch. He has the license, he has the creative freedom to drift all over the pitch and just pick the ball up wherever he is and look to playmake. The advanced playmaker, now I wouldn't necessarily say that his movement is more restricted. He will pop up in the central midfield area, the attacking midfield area, but also in those wider areas as well, trying to collect the ball to playmake. But the difference between the two is where the advanced playmaker actually wants to create his chances where he wants to operate now the advanced playmaker he wants to pick the ball up in between the lines he wants to get the ball between the midfield and the defense and there is where he wants to create his chances whereas the roman playmaker he doesn't necessarily care where he picks up the ball he's just going to pick up the ball anywhere he's roman whereas the advanced playmaker is looking to operate in these sort of areas here turn and then look to create a chance instantly so for Tiago, we are going to be using an advanced playmaker and now it's all about which duty and I went for attack. Now with the attacking duty, he's still going to pick up the ball from deep, but now what he's going to do with the ball rather than just sit with the ball and look to spray a pass. Now he has the option to either spray the pass or progress with the ball at feet. With the attacking duty, he can pop up in the wider areas and look to create by sending in a cross, sending in a through ball, or he could be in that kind of zone 14 area again threading through balls and dribbling with the ball the playmaker on support as you can see on the screen he will just look to stay in the hole and look to spray passes and support players and the forwards so i've gone for the advanced playmaker on attack now it's time for sadio mane's role we've used inside forward so we've just gone for the inside forward on attack but if you are using luis diaz then you could just go to personalize this is just so it's automatic rather than you having to keep changing the roles but for Luis Diaz, you can go for the inverted winger on attack. So Luis Diaz, inverted winger, but Sadio Mane, he will be the inside forward. And lastly, that striker role, Diego Jota, we will be using the false nine. Someone that will be dropping deep to collect the ball or just dropping deep. And this allows room and space for the inside forward like Salah or Mane to make runs off of him and go on to be that main goal scorer so there is the 4-3-3 the player roles as well that is all sorted now it's time for the team instructions when picking a mentality again i had another scratch the head moment because i wanted to go with positive considering liverpool actually have over 60 percent of the ball in real life i know it's crazy but then that could also just be down to their pressing and always willing to be on the ball rather than kind of them keeping the ball if that makes sense because when you do watch them they also like to get the players further forward whereas positive on football manager the players will get further forward but when there are kind of risk-free moments attacking you are looking to get players further forward and you're also encouraging some creative freedom as well so I personally wanted to go with the attacking mentality rather than the positive, even though we all know that Liverpool have over 60% of 
the ball kind of crazy but we went with the attacking mentality now hoping in football manager because we are the better side and also because hopefully our pressing should be effective we should naturally get some decent possession numbers anyway again considering the quality of our team compared to the rest of the teams in the league for the attacking width i kind of played with this a little now we kept it on fairly wide for the actual downloadable tactic but i did also toy with fairly narrow fairly narrow also gave me some very very positive results so this is necessarily down to you again your preference if you are a team like liverpool then i would encourage you to use fairly narrow but we did test it with aston villa and at aston villa or a team like aston villa i wouldn't necessarily recommend using fairly narrow i would just stick to fairly wide with aston villa but if you are a very good team in your league like liverpool you can test out fairly narrow it does bring some positive results so attacking with we are going to be playing fairly wide we are also going to be playing out from the defense this is just so we play our way out from the defense rather than clearing the ball but also try and rack up those possession numbers like liverpool have in real life we're just going to be a little bit more patient when building up rather than the attacking mentality get the ball further forward at all costs we will be playing out from the back Passing directness. Now, to get those possession numbers, you can go for sure. Then that means you would have to set the tempo on higher. I actually left this on default. So the passing directness is just set to standard and the tempo is set to slightly higher. Now, when you're creating your own, if you do want possession numbers similar to real life, you can go for sure a passing and the tempo higher. But I don't feel that is actually a key part of Liverpool's game. That isn't necessarily something that I wanted to capture in this tactic. Now, what I wanted to capture is the actual attack and play. Their speed and the directness in moments in real life. That is what I wanted to capture, which is the reason why for the passing direction, I left it on standard and the tempo is set to slightly higher. We will be passing the ball into space. Now, naturally, this should increase the tempo just a slight bit, but this is just instructing our players to pass into space rather than feet. And for the dribbling, we are also going to be running at the defense. Looking at this tactic, now I can see that we can have an effective overload out on that wide left. On the wide right, maybe it will happen naturally anyway with the inverted winger just coming inside with the box to box midfielder moving out wide as well there could be three players out on that right flank but on the left flank we have robertson who's going to spend most of his time out wide and then we have Sadio Mane as well we can have an overlap out on that left hand side which is why we've gone for the overlap on the left there isn't going to be an overlap or underlap on the right that will just happen but on the left we will have an overlap now this won't naturally happen mainly because when Mane gets the ball, he's going to be looking to dribble more, but he's also going to be looking to get further forward as well. Robertson, he's going to be looking to get further forward. So we're just going to have players not necessarily clumped up, but what overlap will do is ask Mane to hold up the ball and that will allow Robertson to get out on that wide flank. So we will have an overlap on the left and that there is the team instructions wrapped up. Now we can move over to transition. Now for Liverpool, when the possession has been lost, we are going to counter press of course and when the possession has been won of course we're going to counter now when the goalkeeper has the ball what i want him to do is distribute the ball quickly i don't know if some of you guys have noticed but sometimes when allison gets the ball especially when he's looking to hit a quick counter if he noticed that sadio mane or mo salah has the running or has a 1v1 against a defender he will just kick the ball long and his passing is very very good he's got very good technique which is the reason why we have put on distribute the ball quickly in hope that he can just distribute the ball over the opposition's defense but if he doesn't sell or if he doesn't do it he can distribute the ball quickly to either van dyke matip or the fullbacks so distribute the ball quickly and that wraps up the in transition instructions now lastly out of possession previously i would have said that Klopp's liverpool is kind of heavy metal so the much higher line of engagement the much higher defensive line the trigger press all the way up but i feel recently or certainly in the most recent years i feel the press is a little bit more controlled so for the defensive line we dropped it down a little to higher and the trigger press as well we've dropped it down one notch to more often now our press is going to be a little bit more controlled but we're going to also use player instruction to try and control that press as well and make it as effective as we can but we're also going to be using the offside trap the defensive width of course we're going to force the opposition on the outside and then prevent the short goalkeeper distribution and that there wraps up the team instructions now it's time to move over to the player instructions
So for player instructions, not every single player will have an instruction. So the goalkeeper and the two centre backs actually are the only three players that do not have any instructions. But for the fullbacks, because we are forcing the opposition on the outside, and of course for the trigger press, we've knocked it back one to more often. Now, because we are forcing the opposition on the outside, and this is what I was talking about, about controlling our press, now we can ask the wider players to up their press. So when we do force them on the outside, it is the wider players that are pressing intensely. So we are going to be asking Trent to be pressing more often and also marking tighter. And the same will go for Robertson. I almost called him Trent Robertson there. The same will go for Andrew Robertson as well. He will be closing down more often and marking tighter. The ball winner midfielder as well, actually, he doesn't have any instructions. Now we can move over to the central midfielders. We've already asked Henderson to run wider the ball and also stay wider. But lastly, we will ask him to mark tighter. For Thiago, he's going to be controlling our tempo. He's going to be controlling our play. He is the playmaker. So to try again to get those possession numbers for the passing directness, he's going to be set to short our passing, but he's also going to be marking tighter, just like his mate Henderson. Now for the wingers, again, those wide players are going to be key in winning the ball back because we are forcing the opposition on the outside. So for the wider players, they're going to be a little bit more aggressive than the fullbacks because now they have tackle harder. They also should have much more often trigger press. So what we have to do is go back to the team instructions, go to out of possession, not the trigger press back one. This is so annoying. Go back to the player and now we can set more often. I don't know why it works like that, but it just works like that. And now the same for Mo Salah. This should also make it very difficult for the opponents to be playing out from the back as now the two wingers are going to be pressing more aggressively as well and tackling harder. So that there is the instructions for the wingers. Actually, for Mo Salah, I did ask him to stay wider. I did ask him. Now, he's not actually going to stay wider. It's only when the team has the ball. When we have the ball, he's going to be staying wider. He's going to be staying wider. Again, it's all about creating space for Trent to get inside. And he's also going to be an effective, creative player. As we can see here, let's just click on his profile because we don't want to wait any longer. He has 29 assists. Given he does take corners as well, but over half of his assists were from open play. And it is because he gets in these dangerous areas. He also scores goals as well. He scored nine goals. One or two might have been free kicks. But again, as we will see here, he does score goals from open play. Now, lastly, Diego Jota. What does he have for player instructions? He has closed down more. Oh, again, we have to knock it back. So there we are. He has closed down more and he also has tackle harder and that there wrapped up the tactic that's the clock tactic that is how to create a clock 433 and here we are in goal super keeper the left back a wing back on support right back inverted wing back on attack we have a ball playing defender a central defender a ball winning midfielder protecting those we have a box to box midfielder who's also going to be shifting out in those wider areas advanced playmaker on attack two inside forwards or an inside winger if Luis Diaz is playing and then a false nine so that there is the tactic wrapped up and now we can have a look at the Aston Villa one very 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 quickly so for the Aston Villa one we called it Klopp Villa ask me why I absolutely do not know the difference now we don't have the overlap on the left we're just going to create an overload on the left rather than get that wing back to overlap as well the tempo has now changed to extremely high and what else has changed ah the trigger press is now set to much more often. This works better at Aston Villa. I absolutely do not know why. I was tweaking, 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 and this works better. And also for the Thiago role now has also changed to a central midfielder on attack rather than an advanced playmaker. We also have an away version. Well, it's not an away version. It's only when you are playing away against the big size, the Man City, Liverpool, Tottenham. You will see some results in a bit, but we have removed play out from the fence and also the trigger press again has now been knocked back to one to more often that there is the tactics all wrapped up enough of me talking let's very very quickly look at the results and then let's play some games we do have a champions league final to play so actually let's play that champions league final first and then we will end the video with some of the results you do not want to miss any of these results so let's play a game
So it's Champions League final day. Fabinho has a light injury, so we do have to remove him. We can remove Henderson, so we can put Henderson as that defensive midfielder. And then for the box to box midfielder, we will use Nabi Keita and Nabi Keita. So that there is the team wrapped up. Let's get stuck in to this game. So today we're actually going to watch it on extended, just so we can see a bit more of the tactic. But that there, everything's wrapped up. Let's get stuck in. Come on, boys. Oh, Real Madrid on the early attack. Casemiro, Modric, Nacho. Good block by Mane. Oh, Salah works hard to get the ball back. He plays a fine pass to Sadio Mane. Here's Thiago inside the box. Robertson now. Keita. Real Madrid got a lot of bodies back. But Salah with the header. That's a pep flowing move. But straight to the keeper. It's Alaba now with a free kick. Plays it to Mendy. Crows, Vinicius. Is that Ramajid? They're going to play it out from the back here. Luka Modric. Let's put pressure, boys. Let's put pressure. Let's win that played, Virgil. Allison now with the ball. He plays it to Big Verge. Matip, Henderson, Thiago. Nice little overlap there by um, Robertson. And then Salah from goal. Oh my God. Here's Robertson with a throw in now. Henderson, Mane comes inside. Nice little run there by Mane. Thiago, that's a bad pass. Alaba. Here comes Real Madrid again now. Oh, skips past the right back. Oh, nice tackle there. Salah, Matip, Trent. They keep forcing that long ball, that risky pass. Ah, oh, but it's worked off this time. Oh, my God. The amount of chances you miss on this game is crazy. Robertson, Thiago. Cuts back. He plays in Mane now. Mane with the ball. He plays it to Robertson. Robertson running wide. Puts in a low cross. And there's Mo Salah. What a goal. What a goal. Well played by Robertson. What a goal. And there we have Robertson on the overlap as well. Just running wide. Look at him go. Looks like he gets the beating of Rafa. Puts in a low cross. And puts it on to Mo Salah's plate. And there we are. 1-0 to the Reds. And Thiago just gets booked. And it looks like we're taking control of the game now. Here's Trent. Salah already on the score sheet. Trent. Keita. Trent again. Mo Salah. Shot blocked. Ah, oh, another one blocked. Is Mane, Robertson now. Is he going to do the same again? Hard and low. Oh, it's, it's the same again. Mo Salah, come on. Oh, God, I keep knocking my headphones out. Lovely work to go. Lovely work to go. Mane out to Robertson again. And look at this. She's hard and low. Well, this time kind of hard in mid. <laughs> A nice karate chop from Mo Salah. And it's 2-0 to the Reds. Here's Mendy with a throw and plays into Cruz. Henderson nicely cut out. Here's Jota now on the ball running. Thiago plays it out wide to Mane. Stretches the play. Mane brings it in. Oh, lovely link up out on the left. Robertson again for the third. Oh, I thought it was going to be a hat trick of assists, but that was nice defender by Militao. But right, here's Matip. Trent. Oh, lucky. Liverpool just absolutely dominating. Here's Matip now. Right before half time, can we get a third? Trent in that right half space, but here's Keita running wide with the ball. That central midfielder running wide, he brings it into oh, Jota and nicely held by Courtois. And that's half time, 2 0 at half time. Let's get this second half started. That there was a very good first half from Liverpool, absolutely dominant. Mosella on the score sheet twice already. Just like there's a highlight here. Here's Trent, Naby Keita, Matip. Henderson. It's a nice little ball to Trent. Unlucky. There's Vinicius now just running. Plays it to Rafa. Nacho. Luca. Casemiro. Militao. Alaba. What's happening here? Tony Cruz. Vinicius. Oh, Benzies through. Oh, it's a block. 
He's tried to chip our keeper and then we've put in a nice last minute block and Salah's off again. Salah's off again. That's selfish. Ball finds its way to Virgil van Dijk. He brings it forward. Sadio Mane, look, there's the overlap again. Robert Rev from behind. There's Trent, Salah now, Henderson. Thiago looking for Trent, but what the hell was that? We picked the ball back up with Van Dyke, Henderson now, Keita, Mane out wide on the left, plays it back to Robertson, he has no right foot, he's going to put it back on his left, falls to Mane, Thiago, oh my god, how did that opposition, the AI, always have like 10 players in the box, it's madness, well what we're going to do now is put this wing back on defence, try and shore up the game now, it's actually crazy how many players they have in the box at once man, it's Trent with a deep free kick. Oh, that's a poor one. Quarta plays it to Alaba. Ramajid are going to look to build up here. Robertson steals the ball from Asensio. Mane now. Henderson, Diego Jota. Someone's running through there. But here's Robertson now. Oh, it's a hat trick for Mo Salah. And it's a hat trick of assist. For Robinson, it's the same goal all over again. It is now 3-0 to the boys. There's an overlap because the overlap is still on. It just gets there. It just gets there. What a ball. The keeper has to be doing better. And it's... Does that say 3-0? I mean, we've dominated this game. Absolutely dominated. And that wraps up the game. Liverpool are European champions. We absolutely hammered Real Madrid three goals to the zero. And that there wraps up the game. That wraps up that match. Liverpool are champions. But now we can look at the results because as we see, we've won absolutely almost everything. We didn't win the Carabao Cup. But let's look at the results for Liverpool. And we can also check the 10 game, 11 games or so results with Aston Vanilla. Let's load up the results. So in the competitions in the English Premier Division, Liverpool were the champions. We played 38, we won 33, drawing four, losing one. Those four draws all away from home. That one loss also away from home. In the Champions League, as you already saw that we won that, we beat Real Madrid 3-0 in the final. In the English FA Cup, we absolutely smashed Newcastle to bits. 4-1 in that final. As we can see here, we absolutely ruined them. 60% of the ball. And in the Carabao Cup, we got knocked out in the third round by the Hammers. So, as you can see with the team stats, Liverpool with 119 goals. For the most shots for, it is Liverpool. For the fewest shots against, it's also Liverpool. For the best pass completion, we're not in the top eight. But when it comes to average possession, we are at 54%. So we're kind of, I don't know, 8% away from real life. That is a lot of percentages. <laughs> for the tackles one, not in the top eight, thank God. For the dribbles made, we did complete the most dribbles. For the most clean sheets, we come in second. And for the fewest conceded, we conceded the fewest. So for the most goals, Mo Salah with 38 goals. Trent Alexander-Arnold with 24. Mo Salah, Mo Salah. Mo Salah had the most shots. And Virgil van Dijk is also there, but corners, of course. For the most man of the match awards, Trent and Salah both there with both 10 as well. Most key passes, Trent tops that list with 198. For the best pass completion, nobody there. Most tackles won, nobody there. But for the dribbles made, we can see Andrew Robertson, surprisingly, with 104, placing him second. Clean sheets, Allison, one behind Edison with 23. And for the viewers conceded, we have Allison on 6. Now for the squad stats, who scored the most goals? Of course, it is Mo Salah with 48 goals. How many goals did he actually score? So 48 goals in 34 starts with 14 assists as well. Diego Jota with 16 goals, Sadio Mane with 13, Virgil van Dijk with 13 and Origi with 13 as well. Trent Alexander scored 9. For the assists, Trent Alexander-Arnold with 29 assists, Mo Salah with 14, Andrew Robertson with 12 and we have James Milner. James Milner with 11 and then Thiago there with 9. So we can move over to the data hub for the pass map. 
this is our shape from the last game so as you can see Henderson being that protection we have Trent Alexander-Arnold not as advanced as Andrew Robertson but Trent Alexander of course will be coming inside a lot and then you can see also Naby Keita just drifting out in that wide right area so you can see a nice overload here and then Firmino or Jota dropping deep to collect the ball so for the team attacking you can see we outperformed the average in absolutely everything especially in the goals expected goals and the shots per game also dribbles per game as well defensively very good so we can see the 0.45 per game we also had an expected goals against per game at 0.56 attacking efficiency aggressive and clinical defensively quiet and impenetrable possession very interesting we frequently won the ball but we were also reliable in possession as well for the crossing a lot of crosses we were accurate for the tackling we didn't make a lot of tackles we didn't need to because we were always on the ball but when we did make the tackles we were very strong completing over 82 percent for the goals output we had high quality shooting strong defending and for the xg table well you can see here we absolutely done fantastically xg at 104 but we overperformed that by 14 for the expected goals against 21 we done better by four and for the expected points 92 we did better by 10. but that there is the data hub wrapped up the liverpool results wrapped up we can now open that aston villa result so at aston villa as you can see we have two different versions so we have the club villa one and then we have the club villa versus big sides away which i most recently used because we just went away to tottenham and we won 3-0 danny ings scoring a hat trick danny ings has scored 10 goals in 11 games so far but we can look at this table and we're actually on top of the table but I mean, I guess that wouldn't last because we've lost to Manchester City. Hasn't lost a game just yet. But we've played 11, we've won 8, we've drawn 1 and we've lost 2. So if we go to the schedule, check our results. We beat Manchester United, we beat West Ham, we beat Watford, we smashed Burnley. We also beat Brentford, but we went away to, um, what's this team called? Manchester City. Coutinho getting sent off. Kevin De Bruyne scoring basically the free kick result in the sending off and then Bundiena Buendia <laughs> my god equalized in the 46th minute but we went away to Norwich and we lost to Zola scoring in the 20th minute Buendia getting sent off this time in the 70th minute and against um Liverpool Harvey Elliott scoring in the 69th minute so we lost that game as well but we beat Wolves we beat Leicester and we have just beaten Tottenham as well so that there is the results wrapped up i hope you guys have enjoyed this video as you can see we scored the most goals as well i hope you guys have enjoyed this video i hope you guys can now create your own club tactic or use this one and i hope this one will be successful for you as well if you have enjoyed my tactic if you have enjoyed my video even make sure you are subscribed make sure you like this video leave a comment shout out to my patrons i will speak to you guys soon stay safe peace out